Okay, so today at school, I got more information about what you're going to encounter when you come to the school. They're going to allow you to enter a couple different places, but I want to point out, here's the East Lawn, here's the faculty parking lot up here. This is that road that comes in to Valhalla, the student parking's back here. But right here, this entrance right here is underneath the ramp, the ramp that leads up to the main entrance to the school. They're going to make you enter on the 200 level. So if you come in from the parking lot and enter the 200 level here, the idea is walk around this ring until you come to 219. If you're on this side and you come in this way, well, here's attendance. You see, colored. And uh, you walk this way and walk in this pad, pod in order to get into room 219. So that's kind of your strategy on how to find the classroom. And once you get in this and you just start walking, you know, you, you can't miss it. This is the carpeted area. When you're on the carpeted area, you know, that's not where I am. This is the polished concrete. Okay, so you can replay that part if you want. Now, here's the Mac Lab. Here are the architect's original plan uh, to set up the desks in rows, all facing the front of the room. And the teacher's desk, the idea was you put the teacher behind everybody so he can watch everyone. Well, I hate that plan for about six different reasons. So I ditched the architect's plan and made my own custom setup. This is a story unto itself because I had 12 hours to come up with a plan that uh, the, arch the construction guys were going to use in order to cut this electricity and um, data ports into the center of the room. So this is how the Mac Lab set up. We have a lot of computers, uh, but... We just got 36 new ones. So this is where the 36 new computers are. Now here's the problem. How do I seat you? How do I allow you to choose seats and have everything play out right? Well, period three is the largest of all the classes as far as students who have opted to come in. We have 32 students groups A, B, C, and D. Okay, and you see 10 in group D. This is my largest uh, period among any class. Uh, so I have to distribute, and D comes in on Friday, so how can I let A, B, and C choose seats and have D with the leftovers? This is crazy. So I'm going to have to come up with a seating chart. I'm going to have to pull these, and I've, I've made this so I can pull these circles out. Whoops. So I can pull these circles out and um, just pop them in and set up colors and uh, try to establish a pattern where every single class is distanced, but every single class also respects where everybody else sits because otherwise you'll be sitting at a computer someone else has touched. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm not going to try to force you to sit anywhere, but I am going to, to insist that you sit at one of the computers I mark. And I'm going to mark these with post-it notes. You're going to walk in and there's going to be post-it notes, a blank post-it note in front of some of these computers. Uh, group A, there'll only be six post-it notes. You're going to have to choose uh, those six. And I may because we have four computers extra to play with, I may give those four extras right here in A, and then I'll take those four extras and add them to B, and then, you know, you get the picture. So there's going to be some choice involved. But that choice also is balanced with what happens when everybody's here. You know, everybody needs to be on their own computer. And I know you're using your Chromebooks right now. So 
I'm not trying to be a Nazi. I like students to be able to pick where they sit. Where they sit. So you're going to have a certain degree of choice, but that choice is limited by the necessity that we social distance every single day. And if you think this is easy, why don't you try um, yourself to, to mix and match how this is going to work? Because it's going to be a challenge, but a fun challenge. All right. So this is Illustrator. These are layers. Uh, you can do the same thing in Gravit. I could be doing this in Gravit, but this file already exists, and so I'm just going to work here. These colors are square, a square color harmony, and they are not colorblind safe. Uh, but I just wanted some light colors that I could pull out here and work with. So if you're colorblind, I have broken uh, a golden rule of design. And I apologize to you for that. But time is limited. It is uh, T minus about 16 hours, 17 hours before the first kids walk into the Mac lab. So I got some work to do. I'm emailing this out to you guys tonight so you know what the plan is. I'll keep tomorrow's, I'll keep the videos dailies. I'll keep them short uh, because I want every single student, even if you're not coming to school, I want you to watch this because... Part of this is design is about problem solving. And, you know, working in the real world is the best place to solve a problem. Got it? All right.